You know, it's always powerful to share communion with you. Uh, today we're going to work from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me. This is week 32, Made Holy with His Own Blood. Now, in the Old Testament, the high priest offered animal sacrifices that could never make the people of God perfect. Otherwise, there would have been a cessation of those offerings. Instead, those offerings jogged the memory of the people back to sin because their conscience was not made perfect. They had a sin consciousness which gave birth to more sin in their lives. The blood of bulls and goats was limited in its scope. Hebrews 10.4 For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. The offerings under the law could not purify the hearts of the people and cleanse their conscience. However, each of the offerings were types and shadows. They pointed to the one who would come to take away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus Christ was the culmination of all of the offerings. They all pointed to him. He was the final offering. Now I want to focus on two offerings in the Old Testament that pointed to Jesus. Number one, the sin offering. This offering was fulfilled in Jesus when God made him to be sin for us so that we might be made righteous in him. Jesus gave his life so that we could be born again. Through this offering, God made the way for us to receive his nature. When we confess Jesus as our Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we're born again. Our spirit is reborn. We pass from death unto life, from the sin nature to the righteous nature. We not only worship Jesus, but we also imitate him. He was God, but he was functioned on this earth as a man filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. He modeled the God-designed life for us. Listen to this powerful scripture, Romans 8, 29, the Message Bible. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. What an amazing scripture. Through Jesus as our sin offering, we are a mirror reflection of God on the inside. Our outward expression will accurately represent our inner being through the renewing of our minds. Now the second offering was made to teach us about God's forgiveness in our daily lives. It's called the trespass offering. This offering teaches us that God forgives us of our transgressions if we confess our sins. Now like the story of the woman taken in adultery in John 8, the religious vultures brought a woman to Jesus. They told him that she was caught in the act of adultery, a crime that called for the death penalty. In reality, they were circling around Jesus to catch him in an infraction to devour his ministry and influence. Jesus invited those who had never sinned to cast the first stone at her. And they were all convicted by their own conscience. One by one, they put down their stones and left. Jesus then asked the woman, where her accusers were. I'll pick up the story here in John 8, verse 10. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus forgave her. But he still called sin for what it was, S-I-N. Scripture tells us that God has forgiven us as well. Under the new covenant, we can get to know God for ourselves. God has paved the way for us to have a personal relationship with him. Listen to Hebrews 8.12, the Message Bible. They'll get to know me by being kindly forgiven with the slate of their sins forever wiped clean. Listen to Hebrews 10.10, the Living Bible. Under this new plan, we have been forgiven and made clean by Christ dying for us once and for all. The offerings of the Old Testament were burned outside of the camp of the Israelites and Jesus was crucified outside of the gates of Jerusalem. He gave his life for the entire human race. As we partake of communion, we remember that the blood of Christ served many different purposes. Ultimately, God purchased us with the blood. I want to focus on one of those purposes which might be considered as an all-encompassing purpose that's found in Hebrews 13, 11 through 12. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, 
Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Jesus sanctified us with his own blood. As we partake of communion, we remember the price that Jesus paid to make us holy. He was regarded as a common criminal, and subsequently he was taken outside of the gates of Jerusalem to be crucified, to die a criminal's death. But in reality, we were the true criminals. His blood, however, purified us and washed away our sins. Praise God! I think that holiness is generally misunderstood. It means to be set apart for sacred purposes. We are set apart for God's purposes by the blood of Jesus. The cup and the bread remind us that we each have a purpose in God's plan. With his blood, Jesus set us apart for God and his service. Now, I love a scripture from the book of John. It's uh, from a unique translation. It speaks of our purpose. And without a purpose, life is meaningless. But Jesus sanctified us with his own blood. On the cross, he poured out his life blood that satisfied the claims of justice at the altar of God and cleansed his people. Rest assured, you have a purpose in God. In, following, in the following scripture, John is writing about John the Baptist and Jesus. It's in a unique translation, uh, John 1, 8 through 9, the Luke and John paraphrase. Now, John himself was not the embodiment of God's plan, but he came to identify the one who was. That is, the one who planted the urge for purpose and meaning in the heart of every person who has ever been born. Jesus shed his blood and his, whole, his body was broken so that we could be a part of the body of Christ in the earth. We find our purpose in light of this truth. Romans 12, 4, the Message Bible. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something that we aren't. As we partake of communion today, we remember that we are set apart for God's sacred purposes. And those purposes are fulfilled as members of the body of Christ. We can thank God that he has deposited gifts, talents, and abilities within us in accordance with his grace. God has given each of us something to do to show who God is. None of us have earned this high calling of God in the venues of sin. None of us has the credentials to validate our assignment in God. We're each a puzzle piece with an image that fits into a big puzzle. Without our piece, the puzzle's not complete. And if our piece is put in the wrong place, the picture becomes distorted and abstract. As we partake today, we remember that we each have a God and trusted assignment and the abilities to carry out that assignment. Jesus laid down his life so that we could be saved and be a part of the body of Christ, set apart for his sacred purposes. So we commit today to lay our lives down to fulfill our assignments in God, which are ever so dear and precious. Like the Apostle Paul, we count not our lives dear to ourselves so that we can finish our course. Now I want to close with a powerful scripture that is in reality a quote from Paul that was chronicled by Luke. Paul was about to face more suffering and jail time, and this scripture reflects his attitude toward his grim future. He knew he was set apart for God's sacred purposes. Acts 20:24, 20, the Living Bible. But life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. As you partake of communion today, I encourage you to rise from the Lord's table with a commitment to discover and fulfill your God-given purpose through the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that by your blood we've been made holy, that we're set apart for your sacred purposes. I ask you to help my brothers and sisters, God, to discover and fulfill their God-given purpose through the gospel of the kingdom, that each one would be convinced and thoroughly persuaded that they have a purpose 
in life and in the body of Christ. We thank you for it now, for the blood that was shed and for your body that was broken for our healing. Let's partake together.